MTB has become a playground for political, political vested interests. So that has to be, it should be treated as a temple. It should be treated as a pure so-called temple, a mandir. Hello and welcome to Nepal Traveller. We are back again with another episode of Nepal Travel Trade Talk. And today joining me is a very esteemed guest, an old friend. Bibu is the chairman of Pata Nepal chapter. He has been in the travel trade for a couple of decades. Yes. His contribution to tourism has been immense. And he's very familiar with the issues, the challenges, the things that we need to do to get tourism back on track. Welcome to Ashobi. Thank you so much, Terence. It's good to see you. And uh, thank you for the invitation to share a few words. Namaste, everyone. So, be able to start with, uh, for our audience, give us a brief background on Pata in Nepal. Well, Pata, first of all, is an international organization, association. It's uh, it was established in 1951 and over the years from uh, since its starting it moved to Asia then it became Pacific Asia Travel Association. Initially it used to be known as Pacific Area Travel right. Association and in Nepal Pata became an, an entity, a registered entity in 1975. And the person to found Pata and Nepal chapter, it became, it was, it, it was a chapter basically, was late Prabhakar Samsidana, the founder of uh, Hotel Suti, Suti. Oberoi it was at that time. And that was 1975. And then there's been uh, many, many other uh, distinguished uh, chair, chairpersons, including Anup Samsidana, and even the Director General of uh, the Tourism Department, Department and late PP Prasai, Mr. Prasai, and Mr. Basantaraj Mishra, yes. and so on. So, since 1975, Pata has been very active in the promotion of tourism to the international body. Well, uh, first of all, Pata has more than 50 chapters around the world. I think 40 of them are very active. Uh, the rest is, it's, they're doing their best. But Pata is in over 90 countries, members, memberships. And uh, the head office is in Bangkok. And they do, the main purpose is tourism promotion, human capital development, training, research, educating people in the tourism and hospitality, and so forth. Marketing promotion is the key. Yes. I think Pata International has been working a lot with Nepal, assisting, helping with plans, helping with the promotion. Uh, so when you look at Nepal, uh, Pata Nepal chapter, where do you see the contribution to Nepal's tourism? Would you like to recount you know, some of the things? You've done? Well, that's a good question because, you know, going back into the history of Pata, you know, Pata made the master plan for Pokhara as a tourism destination. And uh, during late King Devendra, former king of Nepal, during King, king Birendra's uh, reign, Pata held a very big organized, you know, uh, program in uh, Pokhara and it was, it was declared as a tourism destination. And uh, even Heritage Society of Nepal, together with Pata Nepal chapter, was established as a, as a, as a team to promote Nepal's heritage sites. So Pata has been on and off, or directly or indirectly, been promoting Nepal in a grander scale, uh, you know, from an international perspective. So uh, there's been many, many activities that Pata has been doing. And uh, the other thing is, who can be members of Pata? 
like we have a little over 100 members in Nepal chapter. Anybody you know, involved in the tourism and hospitality sector, starting from A for aviation, restaurants, bars, hotels, resorts, if you have a trekking company, mountaineering company, adventure company, you know, uh, rafting uh, company, or even micro lights, helicopters, any field, any, uh, you know, uh, agency involved in catering to the, uh, for, to the tourists can be a member of PACA, but they have to uh, have served at least for two years since That's uh, starting. And uh, we also have very active uh, members from the tourism, hospitality, training institutions, colleges that uh, teach, like NAPM, teach, teach tourism and hospitality. So, yeah, it's a very, very, very distinguished organization. And uh, we have our own uh, rules, regulations, our own uh, methods of working. So, yeah. And uh, coming to Pata, Nepal chapter, what do you see today? Because, I mean, the world has gone to an upheaval with the COVID. Now it is time to market. Every destination is fighting for its fair share. Mm -hmm. uh, how is Nepal chapter working? Uh, would you like to share some of the ideas? Well, we have uh, uh, members from the private sector mostly. But then on the board, we also have ex-official members. Like uh, Pata Nepal chapter's chairperson would always be from the private sector. The vice, first vice president will be the a CEO of Nepal Tourism Board. And uh, Nepal Airlines Corporation, which is the national flag carrier, will be the second vice president. And we also have a director of uh, 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 tourism, Department of Tourism as a board member. We have uh, other members also, and uh, so that's it. <laughs> and what is the focus at the moment? I believe also there's the Himalayan Travel Mart. The next edition of it will be held soon. So is Pata Nepal chapter very busy with that? Would you like to share something? Yeah, you know, we have we we have we are we are focused. We are bent, hell bent on promoting Himalayan Travel Mart as uh, Nepal's own you know, branded tourism event of an international standard, like WTM, ATM, which is Arabian Travel yeah, Mart, takes I place agree. in May. WTM takes place in London in uh, November. Fitur takes place in Spain. Uh, Spain. And uh, ITB takes place in Berlin. So we want to brand this as Himalayan Travel Mart, June in Nepal. It could be in Kathmandu, next time it could be in Pokhara, could be in Chitwan, but it has to be in, in Nepal. Nepal. And everybody, all our international friends and colleagues, they appreciate the fact that Himalayan Travel Mart is being spearheaded by Pata Nepal chapter. And we feel very happy and proud on the, about that. How has that experience been from the first Travel Mart till the next one that we are planning? The first one was always, you know, uh, it was a very good one. Uh, we had more than 100 travel bloggers and vloggers who participated and uh, we had we saw a great number of sellers exhibitors you know from hotels to you know uh, travel companies to uh, airlines exhibiting and uh, we had many buyers that time people came from all over the world and it was you know those were the less uh, politically disturbed period it was untouched by COVID that time. It was a post uh, earthquake period as well, 2017, just two years after the earthquake. So it went well. Then we had one in 2018, which was, which was also very good. 19 was also very good. And in 2020, which was supposed to be the Visit Nepal year, we had great plans of not only doing the Visit Nepal year, but we also, Pata Nepal had also uh, you know, we had designed a plan called program called NI, NICE, NICE, representing Nepal, India, and China Expo, because Nepal is right in the middle of these two big of, this, of these two big giants, and 
China's outbound exceeds 100 million. India's outbound is also the same. Nepal has to benefit from these two giants. So we approached all the high level authorities. We talked to the Indian ambassador. We even approached the Beijing chapter of Pata and uh, everybody came together on this common platform. So we started promoting it. We, we were hoping that, you know, Nepal would play a pivotal role, a positive role in, you know, uh, uh, establishing this as a, as a special program, you know, a yearly program. But sadly, COVID hit us bad. So visit Nepal was canceled. NICE was canceled. It was supposed to be in February 2020. And also the Himalayan Travel Mart. And 2020 was the year when Nepal was planning to do the visit Nepal. Dubai was planning to do the Expo 2020. And uh, Malaysia, Malaysia was also planning to do the visit Malaysia 2020. So sadly, everything fell apart. And I, in fact, I had also visited Dubai and met the chair lady, the, the, the lady of the Expo 2020. And we had a very good conversation. And so what I proposed was that we combine Dubai Expo, Nepal DNY 2020, and Malaysia 2020, and make package programs that would be benefit all of us. And she was very happy and euphoric. Her name is uh, Dr. Rima Hashimi. She's the current Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. And uh, she was very, very happy with that. And so I came back with the good news and we were all very happy and euphoric. So. But sadly, COVID hit us. You know, it just pulled the whole carpet on the, from our, right under our feet. So, yeah. But at this present moment in time, we are almost into a COVID uh, to come back from that. We're fighting back. What are some of the issues that uh, the Pata is involved with now in the COVID recovery phase? Well, in the COVID recovery phase, let's go back to. 20, late 2020 and early 2020s. Pata had actually planned to, uh, we, we teamed up with SCARF to uh, do a desk darshan program and uh, training in the remote areas, you know, where there are hotels on safety, health, hygiene. And we had kicked off on very good grounds, the t what we call the Tourism Recovery Task Force. But uh, due to the COVID, you know, we just could not push that forward because the, you know, the situation was such. So anyway, Pata did manage to do uh, trainings in far western Nepal. And uh, we taught, uh, you know, hospitality workers and staff members on health hygiene and many other things, including marketing. So that was one. And, and then we, we, you know, we started uh, doing the cross-border tourism promotion. Uh, we did the DMC in Far Eastern Nepal. We had more than 30 uh, international buyers who came from across the border, including India, the dwarves of uh, uh, you know, West Bengal, uh, up north, even from Arunachal Pradesh and uh, Bhutan. We had people from Sikkim, Bangladesh, West Bengal, who came to Nepal, USA, Delhi, and uh, our target was to promote Far Eastern Nepal, starting from uh, uh, Taran, uh, Dankuta, Itari, Biratnagar, Ilam. So it was a very good uh, program that we did. And then uh, we also we were invited to Bangladesh, we were invited to Sri Lanka, we participated, we took a very big delegation uh, to uh, Bangkok, you know, was almost 23 people and they were very happy. Pata International was very happy because they were trying to do a DMC in uh, southern uh, Thailand in a place called Songkhla, you know, it's a coastal area and our participation was a big hit there. So we felt very happy, euphoric, you know, elated. So we felt, we, we you know, what happened was we got the confidence to do more and uh, so we did it. And Pata International even requested us to go and help Sri Lanka, looking at the way we were bouncing, you know, back. From back. 
So, of course, Sri Lanka is a very well established country. Okay, there may have been some political issues there post COVID, but uh, things are slowly falling back to place and they're going far better now. And it's a beautiful country anyway. And so, uh, we, have, we have been participating in many programs overseas. We even went to Russell Kaima in UAE last year and uh, we uh, participated in a program in Bangladesh. India, we did a very big, uh, we participated, we, we took uh, a delegation of eight, eight sellers at that time, you know, in spite of all the hurdles and challenges that we were facing uh, at the Pata, you know, travel, travel mart in Delhi. Uh, we had Nepal stalled. Sadly, NTB was not there, a national tourism organization, but, uh, you know, that was very sad, actually. And so now coming, you know, looking back into uh, recent uh, times, last year in November, one of the most important travel marts in the world, the WTM, World Travel Mart, Nepal's presence was almost in nil. Yeah, makes sense. There were maybe one or two uh, participants from the private sector, but Nepal's stall was empty. In November, it was WTM. In October last year, you know, the war on Gaza started. Even Palestine had its big stall there, promoting tourism. I don't know why Nepal was not there, sadly. So when we saw that and when we got you know, feedback from our international colleagues and friends, they said, NTB, why, why is not NTB not leading? That is the time when some of the tourism veterans and seniors, they approached us and said, Bibu and your team, Part oh, that should take the lead. Should take the lead, and for for ITB Berlin, uh, for Fitur was a little too late, Good. but when we got that kind of assurance, they said we will back you. So the recently held uh, ITB Partha yes. took the lead. Would you like to yes. share anything from? Yes, them? we had uh, we had forty sellers. Uh, we had a delegation of almost 60, 65 people uh, from different uh, you know private sectors including five-star hotels, luxury resorts, uh, airlines, helicopters. It was a very good uh, event. Travel agencies, trekking companies, expedition companies went to ITB. And I think, I, you know, even the ambassador was telling us, you have a very beautiful stall. So I, I, we, that, that gave us extra that's shot in the arm. And that's what we needed. All we needed was Nepal to be there. At least we took the flag there. For that, I don't need any credit. My team and I, we just don't need any credit at all. Nepal has to be there. We we feel proud and we feel happy with the fact that, we, you know, uh, we, we, we were able to raise our country's flag over there. Even the Nepal, His Excellency, the ambassador to Berlin, to Germany said, I'm so happy that you guys came. You know, it was a, we felt emotional, of course, and he spent almost two and a half hours in the Nepal pavilion. And I mean, what more can we you know, expect. expect? But looking at the situation where the National Tourism Organization, Nepal Tourism Board, is not participating, not leading the Nepal delegations, what kind of an issue does that create? Because PATA is, is more of an association. You have hand, you have tan. But tourism board should be leading and they're not there. Right. How does that figure well, out? How does that play out in the market? You know, to be honest with you, it's a, it's a, it's a very sad story here. And we really do not know the internal issues, but the way all international travel trade uh, budget was stopped and, and to be had to, you know, sit back. It, it reflects very bad negative impression in the world market. I mean, they have such good expert, you know, uh, uh, experts in working in NTB, and uh, they just couldn't do anything because we've worked with so many of the, uh, you know, uh, executives there, managers, executives, and so, you know, when when Pata was approached by all these uh, tourism veterans and seniors. Uh, we said, okay, let's go, let's do it. I know it, it was NTB's work, 
for whatever rigmaroling is going on inside, you know, it was, uh, at least we feel proud, happy that we were able to take the delegation. And of course, we, without the backing of the private sector, we would not have been able to do that. So it, it's good. We, we have, and uh, even the ambassador congratulated and thanked us. He invited us to his uh, residence uh, for dinner. And uh, so it was, it was a plus plus thing for Nepal. But if you were to give a message to the powers that be who, who can make or break the destination in terms of Nepal Tourism Board and stuff, what would your humble request to them be in terms of Nepal Tourism Board? First and foremost, let me tell you about myself. I've been in tourism since 1982, and that's a quite a long time. It's, I've been in tourism for 42 years, and it, it's been a very uh, good learning experience in my life. And what I have seen is the growth of political interests in every segment of life in Nepal. And that was, that is in itself very, very discouraging, especially when it comes to making decisions. You know, uh, I think political, you know, interference in a very important institution as Nepal Tourism Board should not be prioritized. This has to be given to the private sector. Let the private sector lead the way. And the person who's at the helm of NTB should be somebody who understands, values, the importance of tourism, the importance of being together. You know, we, they should, you know, encompass everyone, in, in, embrace everyone, and try to listen to our woes, sorrows. They, they, they should be the ones to lead us, take us, take our words to the government. They are the people who should be addressing our issues and problems. But it seems that they themselves have problems within. So I'm, I'm not talking about the, the general staff team, you know, the, they're, they're, they're very they experienced people. Job. It's the people who, you know, are sent into the board. Like, let me tell you, and I, why I mentioned 42 years in tourism. When I joined Pata, when I took up the you know helm of Pata, I, I told everybody, Pata Nepal chapter is a non-political entity at the executive committee board meeting. So if you have any political views, please Don't be. leave your political shoes outside the door. If Nepal Tourism Board could operate in that manner, Nepal would be heaven. We would all be happy. There'll be more tourists. There'll be so much more, you know, promotion work, promotional work would be progressing. Like NTB has become a playground for politi political vested interests. So that has to be, it should be treated as a temple. It should be treated as a pure Chokhur temple, a mandir. So please, my request is stop meddling, bringing in politics into that Chokhur institution. Let the workers work. Give them the encouragement to work. There's always bullying and there's always, you know, that is not done. That is not right. Also at the moment, right at this moment, we are, we don't have a CEO in the tourism board. Right. So, I mean, that appointment also, we hear in the background, there's a lot of haggling and ba uh, bargaining and I don't know what is going on, but why is that position empty? Do you think that we can get the CEO and get back to work as soon as possible? Well, uh, the, the previous CEO's trainer came to an end. So as always, uh, NTB's board has to be reconstituted and the board will sit and choose from the applications of, you know, of, uh, the people who have applied for the post of, C of the CEO. Now, for that position, my humble request is to the leadership of my nation, please do not pick somebody from your pocket and just put him there. The person has to understand the value, the importance of him being there. He should understand his duties. He should be able to uh, address the issues that go on. Uh, you know, and he should. his primary duty would be to help Nepal boost its tourism initiatives and efforts. And anybody who comes with 
you know, knocking on their door, especially the associations. They should be heard. They should be, uh, they should not be turned away. The, the, the leadership should listen to what the private sector is trying to say and uh, understand the value, the importance. And uh, I, I would tell all my uh, fraternity members and brothers, sisters, please keep your politics aside from your tourism, your profession. Your profession is your profession. There's a thing called my time where you could discuss politics, do whatever. And there's this office time, you know, that during that office time, you should focus in your work. And then after office time, you can again go back to your politics. But do not bring politics into your career, into your profession. And do not impose those political issues, matters, onto the new generation, the younger generation, the people who work for you. Let them work. Let them. How is the nation going to move forward otherwise? And uh, this do, is my belief. Do you also feel that uh, as private sector, because most of the associations are from all private sector people with huge contributions. I mean, they're the people putting their money into the business. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that the association should come together, take a stand and say, enough is enough. It's time to get serious. It's time that we have the right people. And is that possible with all the associations? No, we, we have? The, 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 the voice has started. People have started, you know, uh, uh, talking. We have started uh, meeting each other. Uh, we we also got together with our colleagues, our you know friends in uh, you know uh, associations like Han Hotel Association of Nepal, Tan uh, uh, Trekking Agents Association, Nata, uh, Nara Rafting Association, and so on. And we have expressed our you know. Uh, you know, problems with them. And uh, there's this common voice, which is one one voice for tourism. If we can all put our heads together, our hearts together and move forward, I think we can move mountains, not just make, not, not just make trivial changes. We have to group together, come together without any personal political views, but with one view to make Nepal, a greater tourism destination, bring in more tourists. If we can do that, I think we will all be very happy. Look at the massive brain drain in the country, all the youths. Just uh, two, two days ago, one of my trusted staff members, he said, so I'm, I'm finding it very difficult to live in our country. Uh, and I asked him, is it my company or is it the country? He said, the country because he comes from a village and he said, I just want to get out of here. Now that made me sleepless at night. And I, you know, that was, I got experience, very bitter experience. You know, I just couldn't sleep at night. And I told him, look, don't do that. Don't be an escapist, stay back in your nation. Your nation needs you. Your parents need you, families need you. And I had, uh, he said, Sorry, sir. I think I'll I go. Have to go for greener pastures. To, yes, there's greener no pastures. future yet. You don't see a future. And that is that really broke my heart. And all the people I see when I go to Dubai, when I go to Doha, when I go to Malaysia. the USA, I go to Austria, we went to Berlin, Germany. Everywhere I go, I see young Nepalese working. boys and girls, you know, working in small little shops and restaurants. They could do so much better here. I think. We should all come together to bring them back. And uh, yes, I, I believe Pata Nepal can do that. And Pata is working with a lot of young students. I think you have- Yes, a... we have a student chapter. We have a youth chapter. And uh, we want to encourage them to be the leaders of tomorrow. Whether it be hotels, resorts, you know, travel, tourism, it, it, it could be anything else, you know, with, related to hospitality. But uh, the youth should rise. The youth should come out. You, please do not challenge the youth of today. They're not the youths of yesterday. The youths of yesterday are us, you and I. <laughs> but the youths of today and tomorrow, they're different. They have different mindset. We have to encourage them. We may not be able to guide them in the matters of IT, the advancement of technology, 
uh, because we are like dinosaurs to them. But if we can encourage them through love, through other methods to stay back and stand for the Nepal, the country needs all the youths. And this is very important for Nepal. So as a final question to you, how has your journey for decades in tourism been? And is there something there that can be shared to inspire younger people? I mean, we know each other. We've been there from the travel <laughs> march back in I think, 2000. Yeah, but early 2000. it seems we're not inspiring young people or they're still disillusioned. They don't see a future in Nepal or they don't see a future in tourism in Nepal. Right. What would be the message that you'd give to them looking at your journey in tourism? First and foremost, let me tell you one thing, you know, I've, I'm not a highly educated person, but I'm experienced. I've traveled the world. I grew up overseas when I was small. And uh, when I stayed back in Nepal, I, you know, before I was, you know, decided to stay back in Nepal, I was offered opportunities to work in, you know, developed nations, you know, due to my English and my typing skills. I say typing, it's, it wasn't computer. There were no computers or IT advanced technologies, but you know, I, I felt that the country really needed uh, me and my family needed me, my parents, our family means parents. And, you know, when I stayed back, I could learn so much more about, you know, how to, you know, make the whole system evolve. Whatever I was doing and whatever, whatever I was learning, I, I put it into practice. I learned, I put it back into practice. So uh, what saddened me was, a couple of times in my life was to be questioned. Uh, there was a friend of mine, he once invited me on a yacht cruise, private yacht cruise. He was uh, you know, one of the board of directors of uh, IBM. This was like 25 years ago. And so he had, uh, you know, all the cocktails, everything there. And there were people from very high places in the U.S. government. And one of them just came up to me and said, you're from Nepal. We were holding drinks and we were watching the golden, you know, rays of the sunset it. on the Twin Tower. It was still there. This is 1999. And everybody was there with me. And uh, I, was, I was like treated like a chief guest because they had just done a, a major expedition on Mount Everest. And uh, so this guy comes up to me and says, look, there are many taxi drivers from Nepal. And I see a number of uh, bartenders from Nepal. How come you're not here? I said, excuse me, do you want me to be here? He said, yeah, you could be, you could do so much better. I said, so much better? Look, I'm visiting your country. If I had worked in a bar or as a taxi driver in your country, I wouldn't be standing here with this nice gin and tonic in this beautiful yacht, watching this beautiful golden sunset. He was like taken aback, you know, with my great, you know, answer. Everybody clapped at me. He said, that's the way it should be. He said, yeah. <laughs> but I think this is the message that our young people need to get on you, one side, but they also need to feel secure. Because secure. I've talked to many young people and they don't see a future. I mean, they don't mind working now, putting in the effort, but they say, what will I get in a few years? They don't see stability. They don't see something happening in the country. You know, that was my personal uh, experience. But the thing is, the government has to take a very big, bold step in making things easier for the people. Now, when I say easier, there should not be 10 different taxes or system the rules. The, the, you know, there are rules. Even the government officials get confused at times. They make laws and rules that contradict each other. Everything should be simple. You should, you should simplify things. You, let there be a simpler and more easier to understand tax system. You know, when I talk about tax system, I'd like to ask how many of you out there really understand the tax system of the country? And uh, how many of you are 100% sure that, you know, what you are doing is right. The tax system, the rules, the you know regulations, the law. You know, honestly, I find it hard to understand myself, even as sitting here as a chairperson. But the complex complexity should be eased 
especially for people in Nepal, because their focus is in developing something. And you know, every step you take forward, they should be, the person should not take two steps behind. That's not how it works. You have to take three steps ahead and maybe one step behind that. That's okay, that's done, that's, that's okay. But it has to be a step or two forward all the time. What's happening right now is you take five steps ahead, you are forced to take six steps step behind. That is really sad. And I know even the leadership would understand what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Thank you so much Bibi, for taking your time out and it's <laughs> wonderful you, again to catch up and you know and chat about the good old times and where yeah. we are. And I think we need to, to move ahead with that. Thank well, you so me, much. Let me, let me tell you another thing is there are so many nice cafes, restaurants, hotels, lodges. We, we Nepalese have to come together, you know, spend less traveling overseas, go and see your country, go and visit your far western Nepal. Nepal is so beautiful, my God. Go and see the far eastern part of Nepal, far, far, far west. And still yeah, yes. The trickle down effects of your, you know, uh, the ex expense, expenses there would help the people in those rural areas. True. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bibi. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Terence. It's such a pleasure.